Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case, case number 54. This is a fantastic, amazing case. So let's go ahead and get started. We have coronal images and soft tissue window images through the shoulder, and we have an axial image in soft tissue windows through the shoulder. And the question that I have for you guys is, what associated finding does this patient likely have? Does this patient have a tumor, a rotator cuff tear, glenoid hypoplasia, or sequela of glenohumeral joint dislocation? What associated finding does this patient have? And I wanna come back to these images here because I think these are very telling. Again, we have on the left, a coronal image through the shoulder and bone windows, coronal image through the shoulder and soft tissue windows, and an axial image of the shoulder in soft tissue windows. And the finding here, first of all, is that we have a oblique fracture sort of involving the proximal humeral metaphysis, the surgical neck, it may or may not go to the articular surface. It's a little tough to see on the bone window. So we definitely have a fracture. And then in the coronal plane, we'll notice that there's fat in the joint. So there's probably a lipohemarthrosis suggesting an intraarticular fracture, right? Because the uh, fat and fluid within a joint space is a marker for an intraarticular fracture because where does the fat and the hemorrhage come from? From the bone, right? Because the bone is made up of fatty marrow or yellow marrow and red marrow. Um, or blood, right? So, but the other finding here, there's a fat fluid level here in the subacromial cell toitoid bursa. And we can see that here very well as well. We have a fat fluid level in the subacromial cell toitoid bursa. So that suggests that there's a bursal lipohematoma, right? A bursal lipohematoma. And that's a marker for a rotator cuff tear. And it must be a full thickness rotator cuff tear because the only way fat and blood can get from the bone all the way to the subacromial cell to bursa is if there's a full thickness rotator cuff there that allows fat and blood to propagate into the subacromial cell to bursa. So the best answer here is a rotator cuff tear. This finding of a bursal lipohematoma is associated with a rotator cuff tear and more specifically a full thickness rotator cuff tear. It has nothing to do with a tumor. There's no evidence of glandular hypoplasia here. The glandular looks pretty well formed. And, you know, this certainly doesn't look like any glenohumeral joint dislocation, I don't see a hill sacs defect or a bank heart lesion along the anterior inferior glenoid. So the best answer here is a rotator cuff tear. Uh, you can see, again, the fracture. We can see the fat fluid level. This is a lipohemarthrosis and then a bursal lipohematoma in the subacromial cell deltoid bursa. This here is a deltoid muscle. The subacromial cell deltoid bursa is a potential space, you know, right above the rotator cuff and under uh, the acromioclavicular joint and the and the deltoid muscle here, right? And that's, we're seeing this nice example of a straight line suggesting a fat fluid level of differential layering of densities of fluid, in this case, blood and uh, and fat. So, you know, a bursal lipohematoma, it's really a marker for a full thickness rotator cuff tear. Just like a lipohemarthrosis is a marker for an intraarticular fracture, right? The only way blood and hemorrhage can get into the joint space is if there's a fracture. And the fracture has to go to the joint space. And fat and hemorrhage comes from the bone, just like it does in a fracture. In order to get to the subacromial cell deltoid space, there must be a full thickness rotator cuff tear. And that's exactly what we see in this case of a bursal lipohematoma. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another MSK unknown case.